Hey everyone, what's up? My name's Jade. Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome aboard. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If it's not, welcome back. Hey girl. So today we are going to talk about the top 10 things that you experience that you can't possibly ever read or prepare for your first year of being a mama. Number one, everything that you actually prepare for, all the books, the blogs, everything that you read and educate yourself on, it does not matter. I realize very quickly what to expect to, when expecting all of those books. That mom wrote that book because that's what happened to her baby, okay? Your baby is going to be completely different. I mean, I literally could have thrown all of those books away. It's nice as you're nesting and preparing for your baby, but it doesn't matter. Everything you read does not matter. And I can say that with sure confidence. <laughs> Number two, it is absolutely insane the amount of strength that you have not just physically to get through labor and delivery itself or even if you've gone through a process of not actual um vaginal birth or anything along those lines a c-section anything adoption becoming a step parent doesn't matter the amount of strength that you have to have and that just kind of comes out of you naturally is absolutely unexplainable one day i'll share my birth story but i literally if you were to tell me this is what your life is going to be like. This is how it's going to be once your son gets here. You could not pay me enough to actually make me believe that I could endure something like that. But you know what? You do it and you do endure it. And it's absolutely insane. But nothing can prepare you for that. Number three, this is so true. You do not sleep. People tell you all the time, make sure that you sleep, get all of your rest, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no, there's absolutely nothing that anybody can tell you about the amount of sleep deprivation that you will experience. I would say the first, well, my son was in the NICU for the first month, but after that, when he came home, we literally, me and my husband and my son slept in the living room for like a month and a half, because that just worked for us. Um, because I felt like getting into a bed, I would fall into a deeper sleep. Now, that I've been through this once. I think I'll do it differently if God willing we have another child, but you don't sleep. You don't sleep. You learn how to operate on a small amount of sleep. And if you have a significant other, they will sleep more than you. They will snore at night and it will make you mildly and actually incredibly frustrated because you won't have the luxury because you're the mama. That's just the way that the cookie crumbles. You'll get over it. Even now, my son is on a very strict schedule. We have a wonderful sleep now, but still sometimes every now and then if you get in the middle of the night, it's usually you, mama. But if it's not, that's okay. It's great you have a support system that works for you. You guys will figure out your own routine, no matter what. This is like, this is 3.5 routines. You will figure out your own routine. People will tell you, you need to put that baby on a schedule. You need to feed him this, you need to do this, whatever. You will figure out what works best for you, your baby, your spouse, your home, your family. Everybody can offer everything that they want to, but it doesn't matter. I have friends and family, like my son is on a very strict schedule. I have friends and family who have kids going on two years old and they still aren't sleeping at night. Everything will be dictated on you and your family. So don't beat yourself up because other people have their kid on a strict schedule or don't beat yourself up because your kid isn't eating how other kids are eating. I know I struggle with that sometimes too you'll figure it out on your own. Number four, this kind of ties into number three, judgment is real. I've never in my life experienced so many people to have so many opinions about my child, my choices, the things that my husband and I are choosing. But people, even people you know, you don't know, social media people, people in the mall will come up to you and be like, why are you doing this? Well, are you doing this? Have you tried this? You don't know me, my baby, or anything about us. But people just are entitled. They feel that they can tell you. You will grow very thick skin very quickly and if you don't you'll be like me you're just numb and don't care i don't care who's telling me if it's my parents my in-laws my neighbors my friends i don't care i appreciate you from a distance but what you're telling me i may not retain because i don't care i have to figure this out on my own and it will work for me i need your opinion i'll ask for it but think of it this way opinions are like assholes everybody has one all right number two i personally did not experience this but i have a ton of friends and acquaintances that have and that's postpartum depression yeah you read about it 
and it looks different for absolutely everyone. Postpartum is not uniform. It is not the same for everyone, but it's real. And you can't prepare yourself for that. It's just something that actually happens. I actually think I did experience postpartum for like maybe a couple of weeks. I didn't have it for a long duration of time, but when I left the hospital and I couldn't leave the hospital without my son, I was definitely consider myself in a depressive state for at least a week or two until we got ourselves on our normal path. And as you know, I'm not a clinical person, but depression does not look the same on everyone. You can have a smile on your face, but you can be really, really messed up on the inside. Postpartum is real, so make sure if you start experiencing any of those symptoms, talk to somebody, anybody. Um, it's important because sometimes I even have friends who are on medication because of their postpartum because they had very dramatic experiences. So I really think it's important that you recognize those feelings, don't let them just sit and marinate in you. Talk to somebody and get through them. You will get through it. It's really tough though. Number six is huge for me. And this particularly speaks to me. And I have a friend who went through an incredibly dramatic experience. But this is like the most serious and real for me. You need to be prepared for the worst case scenario. You need to be prepared. What if something happens? Well, I say you need to be prepared, but you can't really be prepared for it because I did not think about this at all. Personally, I had my son at 32 weeks. So if he came two months early, I was not prepared for a premature birth at all. There are things that will happen throughout your pregnancy or maybe throughout your delivery or even post delivery that you can't prepare for. But that's something that you need to think about in the back of your mind, not something to freak you out because I know oftentimes as a pregnant woman who I was a pregnant woman once, I just started getting anxiety about everything and anything. And this isn't to put this on the forefront of your mind, but you need to think in the back of your head, something might or can go wrong. That's not something to just keep and marinate here for you, but it's something that's a reality. I actually have a friend who experienced an amniotic fluid embolism where she actually coded more than once while she was delivering. Now this is a very dramatic story and again, not to scare anyone, but it's the reality of life. Something could go wrong and that's just gonna be part of your birth story and that's okay. Oh, number seven. I feel like people can write a book about this. Breastfeeding versus formula feeding. Everyone says breast is best. You need to breastfeed your baby, blah, 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 blah. Everyone's story is going to be different. Everyone makes it seem like you just pop out your boob, your baby latches on and it's great. It's beautiful, whatever. I was fortunate enough that I was able to breastfeed, breastfeed my son up until month five or six. Now my son was in the NICU for the first month of his life. So I pumped at home, got myself on a schedule and was able to give my son um, breast milk that way. After a month, I'd say actually after month four, I stopped being completely consistent with it and that's one thing I will say have to be really consistent with it and I started to give my son formula the doctor actually wanted me to give my son formula from day one because I um, had a preemie but I decided that you know what I'm gonna stick to breastfeeding for as long as I can because that's what worked for me that's what worked for us that may not work for you I have a girlfriend who did not even want like my mom for example did not even attempt to breastfeed me now this was back in 1990 it was a little different but she did not breastfeed me it wasn't an option for her she sis knew she was going back to work and like two weeks and she just put me right on formula and I think I turned out okay but there are some people who really struggle with that with the judgment of other people saying well you're not breastfeeding well it's dumb no okay breastfeeding great if you could do it fantastic I will say it's a beautiful experience it was lovely for me but like I said I have a friend who decided to breastfeed over formula I mean over formula over breastfeed excuse me and her pediatrician judged her for that like Yes, there are studies of everything, but you know what? A fed and happy baby is a good baby. That's just my opinion. Say what you want with it, but the reality is you're going to get come for no matter what you do. Number eight, you have to find the time to be selfish with your time. That's going to be really hard to do the first few months. And I struggled with this. I was overwhelmed. Like when my husband went back to work, I remember calling my mom and I was like, dude, I can't do this and broke down. And maybe you need to have a breakdown for some of us who are incredibly strong and independent and don't want to call for help for anybody you got to make sure that you you got to step outside your comfort zone you will be asking people for things you will be outside of your comfort zone and it will get tough and that's part of being a parent 
getting outside your comfort zone. It's like nothing that you ever planned for, no schedule, no anything. It's all about, it's not about you anymore. And that was difficult for me. So I really had to tap into my friends and family and just utilize those people. Um, but you gotta find the time for you because if you don't, you will suffer. Like even recently, I remember I dropped my son off with my sister for a couple of days during the quarantine. And because I, I literally, it took me months to get to the point to even allow my son to be with anybody else besides us. And I needed that. I did, and that's a choice that we made. You have to remember, you will make choices that other people won't like. And that's gonna be really difficult. If you're a people pleaser, if you're a person that just wants to see other people happy, the only way you're gonna be happy is if you stay stern, you know that you are that child's mama and you gotta make choices that, you know what, sometimes my mom won't like, my in-laws won't like, my family won't like, my friends won't like, but I don't care. It's about me and my family now and you gotta be strong enough to do that. Number nine, if you were in any type of committed relationship, you're in a marriage, you're seeing someone, whatever, it's gonna suffer and it's gonna be difficult. But in the moment of that chaos and that suffering, you don't actually realize when you're in it, but when you get out and you look on the other side, your marriage was being built and structured and getting stronger more than you could ever imagine. It does not feel that way when you are in it. I'm telling you, going back to that sleep deprivation, you feel like there was a couple times my husband was snoring and I was like, oh, you sound like you having good sleep. And I couldn't sleep because our son was up and I was his source of food and I would just like punch him. But he was so great. He would always like try to rock out with us, but ooh chow your relationship will struggle, but that struggle is building beautifulness for your relationship. Last but certainly not least, whoo, chow. Mm, mm, mm. You will see who your true tribe is. You will see who your true friends are, who your true family ride or died family members are for you. You will see who is for you. Because once you have that baby, your entire life changes your expectations of other people will change your expectations of your spouse yourself will change your reality will change your priorities will change i remember i missed i haven't missed a birthday with any of my friends for as long as i remember and i missed my best friend's birthday and i was like devastated but that was the first time that i made a decision where i'm like <sighs> gotta do this for my kid and this is no longer about me or anybody else and you're gonna make those tough decisions you're not gonna be going out as much as you used to you're not gonna be prioritizing you're not gonna be texting back as fast you're not gonna be doing the things that you used to do and you have to be okay with that because you will drive yourself nuts but your true friends will understand that life is changing that you much rather instead of going out when you do have a free minute you don't want to go out you want your friends to come over and have your baby tucked away with your significant other or go somewhere or whatever and you just want to sit down and have a glass of wine you don't want to go out and party maybe you do maybe you don't i did not i wanted to literally just chill i want to be in the house without my kids sometimes and i want my friends to come over and do that i live an hour away from my friends and my family so it sometimes that was tough i'm usually the one always driving to them but it just happened kind of naturally where they just kind of morphed into my new normal and they just adjust it and they came and come and visit me and like you know it comes along sometimes and that's just what it is and it, it just happened without a beat and that happened without a beat because i have solid people in my life and i'm very intentional with the people i choose to share my son my family with out of all of these tips, biggest thing that I want you to take away from this is just intentionality with absolutely everything. No matter how much you prepare for it, you got to be intentional with the things that you do now. Your life has changed. You are now responsible for another human. Everything else is on the back burner. Everything else will fall into place. It's really difficult to understand that and feel that while you're in it. And it's difficult to listen to this even right now if you're expecting and about to have a baby. But I'll tell you this, this last year of my life, my son turns one on June 4th. So any day now, I don't know when I'm posting this, but it is, it was the craziest year of my life. And I am so grateful for it all because of him. You learn this too. I am stronger because of my child. And he teaches me new things every day. He teaches me how to be patient. He teaches me how to go with the flow. No book can experience or tell you about this. No book can give you the joy that you feel when you hold your baby for the first time. No book can 
prepare you for the feelings that you're going to have the emotions the the stress of how you manage it all it just happens you can't understand it you don't know how you're going to do it when you're in it when that baby's up at 4 a.m and you were sleep deprived and you were crying as you're feeding your child it's worth it and you will get out of that like what's happening phase especially if it's your first time because it's unexplainable but it's beautiful i'm praying this video bless you i wish honestly somebody would have told me these things before i had a baby but even if they did it wouldn't matter because you don't know until you experience it you're prepared mama you could do this i hope this video helps you give it a thumbs up if it did make sure that you subscribe to this channel love you guys take care stay prayed up